Today, we're going to use the No Tan app in order to complete a portrait. I got the portrait to a certain place, but didn't feel like I had the contrast in large shapes. So let's get started. What I want to talk today is about how to finish something that you think is already finished. So this is the portrait that I did yesterday, and I always like to stop if I feel like my concentration is really waning, and it was by this time. So this is not bad. <laughs> nothing, nothing in art is good or bad. You know, this is also subjective. But I wanted to show the process for what I do to really finish things up. So I knew I didn't have enough shadows on the face. So I'm using the uh, No Tan app here. And what I'm trying to do is dial in and see where are the dark areas in the face that I haven't accounted for. I see that there's not enough on that shady side of her face. It's, it's there, but it's very light. So when I photograph it, it doesn't show up. In other words, the No Tan pattern that I established from the beginning of the painting meaning the balance of the lights and the darks, I haven't accomplished. I've accomplished it in terms of color, but not in terms of value. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, use the Notan app. And I was what I was doing there is switching between Notan and three, uh, three choices. Uh, in other words, a white, a gray, and a black, as opposed to the Notan, which is just black and white. I chose the one with the gray because I've taken care of most of the gray. Now what I want to do is take care of the no tan, what is really appears as being dark, darker than a mid-tone, darker than my um, the white of my paper. So I've mixed up thick paint. Now this is about um, cream, almost butter. This is really, this is quite thick. I'm going to thin it as I come into her face a little bit, but there's this is just one of those times when I thought, you know, this could work or it could not work. I don't know. But if I don't do it, my painting's going to be kind of meh. And I want it to um, not only resemble my friend, but also resemble my task, which was to complete the no tan. In other, in other words, get those value patterns and shapes down correctly. I'm using a flat brush. It's probably a, a size 16. The paper is Arsh cold press, and it's only an 8 by 8 sheet. I love a square. I always say that. I love a square, but I do. And I'm painting all my book group friends, and that is because uh, what I found is one way to get uh, good photos is to have someone, you can zoom somebody, have them take their photograph near a lighted window, and you can get some good lights and darks. Works a lot better than asking for snapshots, because what you end up then getting are photos, but, but no shadows on faces. All right, so here I'm going in. You can see that's considerably darker, but that's what I need. And you can see that on the photograph as well. Now, I always say I'm not matching the photograph to the, my colors aren't going to match the photograph to the painting. That's not my goal. My, but my goal is to match value. And I do not have that dark side of the face. I do not have a pattern on the dark side of the face that is darker. It's really not darker yet than the light side of the face. And in order to have the contrast, I need to do that. I also am going to push the value range a little bit, uh, go even darker than I already am overall, so that my range will go all the way from the white of the paper to what you would consider black. But I haven't done that yet. So it looks quite hesitant, and that is because I'm not going to, first of all, don't bring out the small brush. This is not the time to bring out that tiny brush, because that is, that is the road to uh, heck, for sure. So staying with a big brush is what I need to do because I'm looking at large areas. If I get all involved in the tiny, tiniest details, you know, especially, for example, the wrinkles in a face, it, it's just going to go to rack and ruin. It just is. Stick with the overall plan from the very beginning. It's very tempting to pick up a small brush here, but I'm not going to do it. I am putting warm tones on the side of her face that is in sunlight and trying to go toward darker tones, meaning blues and greens and purples or violets, on the side of her face that's in shadow. Now we're starting to get somewhere. And down at the bottom of her chin, there's a little bit of reflection from her coat. So, and you'll notice I don't rub. I'm putting the, dropping the paint in. There's a stroke but I don't go back and correct. Make sure, you know, I can make sure ahead of time that the that what I want to do, I'm definitive about it. So when I go in, I make a stroke. 
All right, now, as always, when you do one thing in a painting, then you have to adjust other things. That meant that the background now needed to be darker than it was before. That's already looking better to me. And quite frankly, more like my friend. What I'm doing right now is I am doing pictures of my people that I know, friends, family, or at least people that I know, so I can be sure that I'm getting a good resemblance. If it's someone I don't know, I'm kind of guessing. But eventually I'm going to have to do that as well because I'm going to run out of goodwill with my friends at some point. So there's always a pretty red spot, you know, somewhere at the bulb of the nose. So I'm putting that in. I mean, there's some things that you may not see, but you just know about the anatomy of the face that you can do at this point too. Now that white patch on her cheek on the darker side of the face, it is too white. Remember anything in Anything in shadow can't be as white as what's in the light, as the lightest spots in the white. That already is looking better. And by better, I mean it is fulfilling my task, which was to match the, the no tan from the original photograph. And in the meantime, what I'm getting is I'm getting a depth of color. It's just, um, it doesn't look as washed out. And let's see, I can't tell if that's the end here or not. I haven't brought the dryer out, which is interesting. So this is speeded up to two times as fast as I usually paint. So I must have been working pretty, pretty slowly because this is not a time to, um, I can definitely blend things if I want to, you know, soften an edge, but it's not a time where I want to lose control of my, um, of my purpose when it comes to finding value shapes. Oh, there's the dryer. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> Should have known I wasn't quite finished. I kind of had a hunch, but there's not much more to do. Oh, I know what I did now. I brought out some gouache because there's no way to restore whites of the paper once they're gone. And there are just a couple spots that I felt needed to be lighter. And that's just to my eye. I don't know that it even shows up in, in the final piece. And many watercolor societies won't let you use any whitening agent at all, any gouache. But this is very thick. Uh, white gouache that's going in just so that I can have some highlights. You know, I, I mostly paint for myself and so there are no rules. But what does matter is that I, 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 you know, that feeling of accomplishment when you feel like I set out something that I wanted to do, I followed my strategy and I completed it. So I know that I brushed through really quickly how to use that No Tan app and there are other um, other videos on this channel about that no tan app it's extremely cheap i think it's only 2.99 or something i do use it all the time uh, especially for faces i would say at this point i don't use it very much for regular painting but when it comes to something i'm less certain about i will pull out that program to check it's to check my value shapes and make any adjustments that need to be made that my eye just doesn't see. So please join my YouTube channel. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.